Welcome to Motopedia.ae. My name's Lane Redman and I've been blessed and lucky enough to be the special guest host of this special episode by the Motopedia gang, quintessentially British, the Morgan. We're going to be reviewing the Roadster and the Freewheeler. Make sure and stay tuned. Founded in 1909, Morgan cars have achieved their fame throughout the world for their performance, their charisma, their personality, and just sheer quintessentially Britishness. Handcrafted to the buyer's spec, using three core elements, ash, aluminium, and leather, Morgan produce around 1,300 cars a year in their factory in Worcestershire. You can go and watch your car get produced, have a cup of tea, and get it down to the T. What color leather, your trimming, everything. First, let's have a look at the Morgan Roadster V6, the most powerful of the range. Look at it. Ah, this is gorgeous. Okay, so let me give you a few facts about this fantastic car. It's a 3.7 V6 Ford engine, six-speed manual gearbox, weighs around 950 kg. It produces around 300 brake horsepower. Trust me, it is a beast. You know, some of my favorite British cars, you've got the Aston Martin, you've got the Bristols, but the Morgan is the last of the family owned, independent family businesses. Fantastic. Now I'm super excited to drive this car, I cannot wait, but I'm equally excited to see what is actually under the hood. I wanna see what the engine looks like. <sighs> if I could figure out how to open it. Simple enough. <laughs> Wow, look at that. Perfectly aligned with the car. This engine gives you 280 pounds of torque with a top speed of 225 kilometers and naught to 100 in 5.5 seconds. Mwaha. Okay, let's move to the back. The curves, look at it. Quintessentially British. This car was designed and first made and produced in 1909, but it's still relevant today. Look at the font. Even the same. The rim, the classic. It just looks exactly the same, straight out of a movie. It's just designed for long drives in the English countryside. Oh, we're in the UAE, so long drives in the wadis. I've talked about it, I've marveled at it. I know quite a lot about it, but I haven't driven it yet. Now that is what I'm looking forward to. So I think it's time to go for a little ride, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant, look at this. First impressions is this beautiful oak wood steering wheel. Absolutely fantastic, classic as well. Beautiful lever and that six speed gearbox just ready and waiting to get used. What time is it? Let me check my watch. Time to drive the Morgan. <laughs> yes. Listen to the sound of that, that V6 Cyclone. <laughs> Woo! Okay, sorry guys, I've got to go. It's finally time for me to enjoy myself. Ta-ta!
<laughs> it's not easy to get in and out, but that doesn't matter. The car is ferocious, absolutely amazing. You just want to just keep driving and driving and driving. Woo! Love it, man. What a ride. Okay, let's move on to the freewheeler. The Morgan Freewheeler. This is how the car brand first started in the 1930s. This one now is a interpretation of a classic. Launched in 2011 and it's not changed a bit. It just looks like a bullet and an aircraft at the same time. Look at it, the engine's at the front. Rear wheel drive, amazing car. A two litre V-twin, 82 brake horsepower. It doesn't seem like much, but the car only weighs 525 kg, so it should perform well. Let's take a closer look. Beautiful, the chrome's exposed so people really look at you. <laughs> and not only for that, the hot weather conditions here is really needed because it cools down the engine superbly, especially when you're just going and flowing for hours. People are looking at you and you're cruising. <laughs> it produces 140 newton meters of torque, top speed of 185 kilometers, and naught to 100 in six seconds. All right, let's move around the back. Look at the wheel, classic. <laughs> oh, look at the exhaust on it. <laughs> oh, people must just look at this in awe and just think, what is it? Just driving down the street, you must just stop traffic. It's fantastic. I love the aerodynamics of this car the rounded back. You see, even in the 1900s, this was built for speed. I can imagine this on the track, it must be amazing. And it still would a head turner back in those days as well. Time to take this bullet out for a spin, I say. Yes. Where's the steering wheel? <laughs> Proper racing car. Oh, this is incredible. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Look at this, man. It's like a proper cockpit. Look, it's got the... Oh, mate. <laughs> the switches, this is incredible. Oh, I love this. Oh, I can't wait to take this out. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Let's do the thing properly, shall we? <laughs> proper goggles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, ha, ha, ha. That is a rocket. I mean, they've kept it classic and original in terms of handling and steering as well. It's not too great, but it's quick and it's a lot of fun. Amazing car. Right, I think it's time to go back to the studio. But first, let me have a cup of tea. Let me see, I've got my tea here. English breakfast or Earl Grey? Hmm. I don't 
So here we are, back at the studio, and it's time for tea. I decided on the Earl Grey in the end. Jeeves, are you here? Thank you very much. Steady, steady. Thank you. Wonderful. Ugh, the best of British. The Morgan Freewheeler, also known as the Morgan Runabout first graced public eyes in 1910 at the Motor and Cycle Show in Olympia, London. Now it's not easy merging the old to the new, but Morgan do a bloody good job at it. Now I try it all the time, as you can see, I'm a very confused soul, but they do a good job. So let's start. The cockpit style. Now I love what they've done here. The switch. It's like that cockpit airplane switch and the old school horn which is actually a switch, you know, it's not the pump, it's a switch. I tend to just often shut it and close it quite a lot because it's just that whole gadgety feel to it. Really nice, really nice. But with the dials, there's no clock, it seems like. I've looked around and I have to use my own pocket watch. And then make the dials old school as well, but they're quite modern. Ah, oh, and that view straight down. You're in a race car, but it actually got that feeling of actually being in a Spitfire aeroplane. Mm, it's great. Um, and the petrol gauge. It's a little bit tough to work out because it's in percentages rather than just an empty or a full. There's still some old things which I think they should have added. Rear view mirror. There's no rear view mirror. You've got your two sides, it's great, uh, but with a vehicle like this, you really do need a rear view mirror. The other thing was storage. Um, you've got a little bit of storage at the back. And I know it's difficult because it's a three-wheeler, but you've got to be really clever about how you do it. And one major thing, we're in Arabia. Beautiful leather, it's black, it gets hot. We need AC. Is there AC? No. Major, major no-no. So, as I said, the old school and the new school merging is a tough thing, um, but I think they do a good job. The Morgan Roadster. Much to the delight of many people in the British countryside, Morgan announced they were bringing out a four-wheeler in 1935. They said there would be space at the back for your luggage. Brilliant! <laughs> You'll be able to cruise down the countryside, open top, wind blowing. Ah, oh, delightful image. Talking about images, Time to capture this moment on my pocket camera. Snazzy. Time to capture this delightful vehicle. Yeah, lovely. Time for a selfie, they say, isn't it? Yes. There you go. Ah. Oh. Looking good, yes. Oh, one with the car in, yes. Got to get the car in. Yes. Pleasure. Time for a cruise and maybe a game of cricket with my good friend Jeeves. Ah, what about Giles and Henry? <laughs> but cruising down the British countryside is nothing but a deceptive facade because it's not for cruising. This is an all in out sports car. 3.7 litres of pure power. V6 engine, rear wheel drive, it's even got a stopwatch on the dash to record your lap times. Really, the engine sounds like a symphony. It's a fantastic car, real, real, real pleasure to drive. A 
Again, that view down the bonnet. Look at the grills just looking mean and ferocious. The car is an absolute pleasure to drive. And as I said, the, 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 the symphony of the sound of the engine is just electrifying. Amazing car. It reminds me of um, one of those movies, even though it's a British car, very quintessentially British car, racing green at that. But it reminds me of like a few American gangster films or even The Great Gatsby. Hmm, lovely. Moving on to the interior. This steering wheel is an absolute pleasure to look at and to feel. Look at it, absolutely stunning. What I'm not too sure about though is why is the clock right in front of me when it should be to the side and the speedometer is to the side and should be right in front of me. That's a bit of a crazy thing. Also, these are like, what on earth? Like why would you put on such a beautiful looking car, right? You're gonna put these plastic bits of, <laughs> <laughs> like black bits of plastic. It seems like it should be on a, a micro or a teeter or something like that. Very strange, very strange. But we have AC. Victory! We have AC in this car. Absolutely fantastic. Also, there's a little stereo here, which I like the way they've hidden this as well. It's down, it's tucked away so you can't really see it. It doesn't ruin the image of the whole thing. Really, really nice. Again, the gear stick. Yeah, the gear six a little bit too modern. They could have kept that old school classic as well. But beautiful tan leather, the wood here as well. Lovely. Oh, and this. Why, oh why, oh why. Look at it. It just looks like it should be out of some sort of Ford Cortina back in the 80s. It's ridiculous, man. Why, why would you do that? Have a nice chrome one. Like these ones are okay, right? You've got your, 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 your wings like this. So why not have the central, like, chrome like that as well very strange very strange three windscreen wipers i like that little small ones it might be a bit of a technical nightmare if one breaks down but uh, nonetheless they look really nice and cute and gimmicky and the storage space i mean you've got your glove compartment but that's exactly what it is for gloves maybe a couple of bits of paper you've got your pouches here on the side on both sides Pretty good. Again, you can probably get a mobile phone, a couple of bits of paper in there or whatever. But again, no storage for like cups, cup of tea, drink, refreshing can or something. Nothing at all. And there's quite easily space in here to do that, but they didn't do it. Very strange. Every beginning needs an ending. I've driven both cars, but now it's time for the final verdict. Morgan, over 100 years of driving passion. The Roadster. 299,000 dirhams it retails at. The freewheeler, 216,000 dirhams. Now I found it difficult to get in and out of the freewheeler, but it's a wonderful ride and a true head turner. If you're that sort of person, you wanna go down and go for a coffee and show off and let people watch you, this is the one. So I think the Roadster's more my kind of thing. I love the wood finish, I love the steering wheel, the speed, the power of the thing. Of course, you've got the clock right in front of you and, and like, I'm not too sure about the rear view mirror. Hopefully those things can be adjusted and changed because it's still a family and business at the end of the day. But yeah, overall, I think definitely this is my kind of ride. So I hope you enjoyed this very special episode of Motopedia. And for more car reviews, check out motopedia.ae. Thank you so much for having me and make sure and give them a big like on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. So, Ta-ta for now and see you soon.